A very good morning. Uh, welcome to Holy Trinity Church this morning, and also those who are watching at home. May God peace be with you. Before we enter into the time of worship, let's hear God's words in Psalms 134. Psalms 134 recorded, Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands to the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who make heaven and earth. Father, we give thanks for this privilege that we can come into your presence to worship you so freely. Thank you, Father God. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, The Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord with you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these laws in our hearts. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to us from all sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weaknesses, through our own deliberate thought. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Receive now the words of absolution. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As God's forgiven people and as we come into God's presence, let's continue our worship by praising the Lord together, Alvin and his team. Morning, church. Can I invite all of us to rise? Psalms 24 tells us uh, to be a generation that seeks the Lord. Let's come together to worship the Lord. Open up skies of mercy. Rain down. Cleansing flood, healing waters rise around us. Hear our cries, Lord, let them rise. Yeah. 
can feel your mercy falling. We are turning our hearts back again. Hear our praises rise to heaven. Draw us near, Lord. Lead us here as your kindness, Lord, that leads us to repentance. Your favor, Lord, is our desire. It's your beauty, Lord, that makes us stand in silence. Your love, it's your kindness, Lord. It's your kindness, Lord, that leads us to repentance. Your favor, Lord, is our desire. It's your beauty, Lord, that makes us stand in silence. Your love, your love. Give us clean hands, give us clean hands. Give us your Give us your hearts. Let us know. Today's scripture is Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Shalom Alekem. Wow, 
That's beautiful. Praise God. Shalom Alekem is greeting in Hebrew, meaning peace be upon you. And to respond the same, we say Alekem Shalom, meaning unto you peace. Let's try this again. Shalom Alekem. Praise the Lord. Now we all know Shalom means peace in Hebrew. It is the most common word used to greet each other by the Jews. The modern meaning of Shalom could be the greeting in English, hello or goodbye. However, Shalom has a deeper meaning than just the modern greetings of hello or goodbye for the Jews. And I think many of us understand the word peace to describe mainly the absence or the end of war and chaos. Even in a situation where a land was devastated or cities were in ruin and perhaps people, men, women, children were starving. And if war that had caused such devastation and ruins came to an end, we would rightly say that peace had returned. Now, just like the current endemic situation, many Western countries have declared the COVID-19 pandemic is over. All the safe management measures are lifted and people's lives would return to pre-COVID times. Some would give off a sigh of relief that for two long years, their lives had been chaotic. Was yours also chaotic? And finally, peace and normalcy is restored to their lives. Now, William Barclay, a the theologian, wrote that shalom has two main meanings. First, it describes perfect welfare, serenity, prosperity and happiness. And for the Jew, peace is a condition of perfect and complete positive well-being. And second, Shalom describes the right personal relationships. It describes intimacy, fellowship, uninterrupted goodwill between fellow human beings. Peace describes happiness and well-being of life and perfection of human relationships. Psalms 122 verses 7 to 8 has a prayer that says, Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, Peace be with you. Indeed, the peace of our Lord is with us. It's within this wall, within His church, the church local and the church universal. The psalmist here in Psalm 122, verses 7 to 8, is praying that every good blessing should descend upon the city and upon its citizens. That is why the Jews greet one another with the saying, Shalom Aleichem. Now in the New Testament, we see Paul begins every one of his letters with the prayer that grace and peace may be on the people to whom he writes to. For example, in Galatians 1.3, he said, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus was leaving his disciples in John 14 verses 27, he said to them, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And I believe each and every one of us, Christians, 
are to receive peace from our Lord and to share the peace of God to people around us because we are called to be sons and daughters of God. In today's passage, Jesus declared blessings and affirmation of our identity if we truly lived out to be peacemakers. Now we will look at two points. Why we ought to pursue the state of being extremely happy or blessed to be peacemakers, which our Lord Jesus has declared. First, what does it mean to be a peacemaker? And second, what does it mean to be called the sons of God? So before we begin, uh, before we carry on further, let us come to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Father, we want to thank you for gathering us into your presence. It is your love, your kindness that has caused us to come with repentant heart to seek you, to seek for your grace and for your mercy. And we seek, Lord, for your presence and your Holy Spirit right now, this moment, to move among us. Teach us, Lord. Reveal to us your word and help us, Lord, to be ministered by your Spirit and by your word. Use me to speak forth your word, that, Lord, your word will touch our lives and our hearts and cause us to examine our lives, that we may turn back to you and resurrender ourselves to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So first, what does it mean to be a peacemaker? I think it is important for us to notice the difference between peacemaker and peace lover or peacekeeper. There's difference between peacemaker and peace lover. Now in this beatitude, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God. The people who are blessed are not the peace lovers, but the peacemakers. On the surface, on the surface they seem no different. Peacemaker, peacekeeper, seem the same. But there is truly a big difference when we understand the circumstances Allow me to explain. For example, a man may know that there is something wrong in some situation. Maybe in his family, maybe in the church, in the cell group or ministry group which he is a member of, or perhaps even in the society at large where they work their workplace. And he may know that something ought to be done to help rectify the problem. But he may also know that to take any step to try and mend the situation may well involve difficulties, troubles and issues which is not pleasant for him to face. Have you ever encountered such a situation? I think we all do. At some point in our lives, be it in our homes, the church or society at large. So, what do you do? Perhaps in the minds of many people, especially those peace-loving people, they would decide, let's not rock the boat. For peace's sake, I should keep it to myself. So he allowed the situation to continue and the whole matter to get from bad to worse because peace to him is to avoid all trouble. Many call this 
particular behaviour, kicking the can down the street, or sweeping it under the carpet. Such a person may be called a peaceable man and a peace lover, but he is certainly not a peacemaker. Why? Because if any problematic situation is allowed to continue to snowball, eventually the problem becomes bigger and bigger and more serious will be its consequences. And needless to say, the harder it will be to resolve. I'm sure most of us, if not all, would agree with that, right? On the other hand, the person who is blessed is the man who is prepared to face difficulty, unpleasantness, unpopularity, trouble in order to make peace. The peace the Beatitude speaks of is not the fake peace which comes from avoiding the issue. It is the peace which comes from facing the issue and from being prepared to give everything in working and in sacrifice which the situation may demand. Now, those who make and preserve peace among one another are more than peaceable. They are peacemakers. So, who are the peacemakers that we can find in the Bible as an example for us? Let me share a few from the Old and New Testament. First, Abraham, the father of the Israelites. He sets an example for us to follow by solving the conflict with his nephew, Lot. In Genesis 13, verses 8 to 9. Then Abraham said to Lot, Let there be no strife between you and me, and between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me. If you take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. Abraham is not avoiding, but he is confronting it to make peace. Next, we have Abigail. Her story echoes the hearts of all women as an example of true submission and courage, even in the face of danger she was a brave peacemaker. In 1 Samuel 25, verses 14 to 31, we have the situation where David and 400 of his men were on their way to seek revenge for Nabal's foolish response. Nabal was Abigail's husband then. And one of Nabal's servants informed Abigail of her husband's lack of social grace and David's intention to kill them upon his arrival. Abigail's response was in stark control to that of her husband. Without hesitation and without telling her husband, Abigail gathered together food supplies and loaded them on donkeys, and then she headed out to meet David, who was on the way. She appealed to David to refrain from the murder he was about to commit. Ab Abigail's humble response turned David's heart. He saw the error he was about to make because he himself had just spared the life of King Saul, who sought to kill him. Yet, David here had wanted to kill the household of Nabal just because Nabal had insulted him. David's anger had nearly driven him to seek revenge against a man who was not the real enemy. James 1.20 reminds us, the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Sometimes we truly need a peacemaker to help us do the right thing. 
when we, especially when we are in, in anger. And by the same virtue, we help diffuse the anger and prevent a bad situation from getting worse by confronting the issue as demonstrated by Abigail. Next, in the book of Esther, chapter 10, verse 3, we learn about Mordecai's righteous and just ruling who brought peace to the society and the Jewish community. I'll read to you verse 3. Mordecai the Jew was second in rank to King Ahasuerus, and he was great among the Jews and popular with the multitude of his brothers, for he sought the welfare of his people and spoke peace to all his people. Mordecai reminds us of many of the heroes like Martin Luther King Jr. that you saw in the picture earlier, Mother Teresa, and many unsung heroes that fight for freedom and help the needy. And last but not least, in fact, the greatest is the suffering servant of our Lord Jesus, the God of peace. In Isaiah 53, verse 5, we read about the prediction of the Messiah who is to come, to suffer in order to bring peace between God and man and to restore the relationship, the broken relationship that is caused by sin. Here, Isaiah 53, verse 5, I'll read to you. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. You know, as we reflect and think about these characters that I have mentioned earlier, they show us in the circumstance they are in, they are bridging gap and restores peace to the relationship between God and man, as well as the relationship between man and each other. Man here refers to human being. A peacemaker is one who actively works to bring about peace and reconciliation where there is hatred and enmity. God blesses peacemakers and declares them to be His children. Those who work for peace share in our Lord Jesus Christ's ministry of bringing peace and reconciliation. Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 to 19 affirms, All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to Himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to Himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting us to the message of reconciliation. Brothers and sisters, each and every one of us are to be that peacemaker. There is no option because we are the children of God. Now this brings us to the next point. What does it mean to be called the sons of God? So who are the sons of God? Of course, besides the obvious Jesus, the Son of God. And I think we may have in mind that the sons of God are those who have put their faith in the saving grace of God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Correct? John 1, 12 says, To all who receive Him, meaning Jesus, who believe in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. And Galatians 3.26 says, For in Christ you are all sons of God through faith. In other words, we become sons of God by trusting in Christ for our forgiveness and hope. Well, that is true. When Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. He is not telling us how to become a son of God. Rather, Jesus is simply saying that sons of God are in fact P 
peacemakers. Now, to be clear, sons of God used here is a generic term in Hebrew to represent children. That is why some Bible translation states children of God. Or we can also say sons of God and daughters of God. So, people who have become sons of God have the character of their Heavenly Father. We know from Scripture that the Heavenly Father is a God of peace. And most important of all, that our God is a peacemaker. You see, God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself, not counting their trespasses against them. He made peace by the blood of the cross. And therefore, our God is a peace-loving God and a peace-making God. The whole history of redemption from the beginning in Genesis right up to the end, it all in, into the New Testament, it climax in the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus. And this is God's strategy, His plan to bring a just and lasting peace between fallen man and Himself. It is by no one's effort, but God Himself. And God is also reconciling man between His fellow men. As the saying goes, like father, like son, God's children, we have the character of our Father, our Heavenly Father. What He loves, we love. What He pursues, we pursue. D.A. Carson, in, a, in one of his interviews on uh, Matthew 5, 9, he puts it this way, the peacemakers are called children of God or sons of God because of their eternal reward in following Jesus. The verse is saying that those who inherit the kingdom of God through faith and trust in Jesus Christ will receive the eternal reward of being a child of God. Their reward is what makes them blessed or happy. And their peacemaking simply reveals and proves their trust and faith in Jesus. What it is saying is that God is the supreme peacemaker, and insofar as we are making peace, we show ourselves to belong to God's family. It is not talking about ontology. It is not talking about how we become a Christian. It is that if you act like God, you are Godish. And one of the ways of saying that is that you are a son of God. How wonderful that affirmation from a theologian who shares with us what he, he finds this verse means. As sons and children of God, we are peacemakers. We are to make peace. So the phrase sons of God means God-like. The translation of this beatitude might, be, might well be say as blessed are those who produce right relationships in every sphere of life for they are doing a godlike work if i may put it this should be our lives this is why we are here living on this earth to reconcile men to god to reconcile men to one another and this is a heavy responsibility for all of us, no denying that. And we ought to learn from our Lord Jesus. So how does this apply to us today in practical terms? A peacemaker is one who promotes God's peace, right? And as Christians, we are to seek shalom, peace, or holistic well-being for ourselves and the world around us, for people around us. We are called to care for the spiritual needs of people as well as their physical needs. We seek to create shalom for each person we encounter. 
For example, loving and serving the community of believers in Jesus Christ in Holy Trinity Church. Many of, that, many of us are doing that. And praise God for that. And let us continue to do the good work that our God has entrusted to each and every one of us. Be it leading worship, be it leading the worship service, be it preaching, be it leading cell groups. Each of us have a role to play in the family of God. Paul reminds us that we are a member of the body of Christ. Each and every one of us have a different role to play. Perhaps we also want to get involved in a community at Kampung Glam or Peko, giving out food, befriending the elderly and perhaps within your neighbourhood caring for an elderly neighbour too. Helping to look after the neighbour's children. Talking about this, I want to thank God for Serene. You know, we have this uh, Parenting Young Children course and Serene has volunteered to care for the children, to give childcare while the parents are attending the course. Praise God for her heart loving the community here. Perhaps we can also look at supporting the missionaries in their work. And I'm sure those of us who have spoken to Reverend William will know that it is hard work out there in the field. As a missionary, you are so-called alone, right? So they need a lot of support from us. So whatever the need is in our community, we are to emulate the peace of God by pursuing His peace on behalf of the people around us. St. Paul encourages us in Philippians 4.9, What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Paul is encouraging not just head knowledge, but putting it to practice. Our faith is shown in what we practice. To conclude, a peacemaker is different from a peace lover. A peacemaker is the person who is prepared to face difficulty, unpleasantness, unpopularity and even trouble in order to make peace. While the peace lover is one who shuns confrontation to make peace and thus foster a fake Peace. The peace in Matthew 5 9 speaks of is not the fake peace which comes from avoiding the issue. It is the peace which comes from facing the issue and from being prepared to give everything in working and sacrifice in which the situation demands. Like Abraham and Abigail, we work to avert hatred, anger, and evil from our relationship with others. Like Mordecai, we work to bring peace to the needy and helpless with the compassion and righteousness of God. Like Jesus, we work to bring people back to the saving grace of God through Jesus' suffering, death on the cross and resurrection. Therefore, a peacemaker is one who actively works to bring about peace and reconciliation where there is hatred and enmity. To restore the broken relationship between God and man and the relationship between man and each other. In this beatitude, Jesus calls us to obedience in being a peacemaker. With others inside church and outside of the church. This means we are held accountable for how we respond behind the wheels when we are in a traffic jam. And how we respond when there is a hurt from a friend. And how 
we respond when something is done that we don't agree. May God grant grace to each of us as we reflect and examine our thoughts, our words, and even our deeds, our relationship with one another, our relationship with our family members, our parents, our grandparents, our grandchildren, our children, our relationship in the church with one another. As we seek to be obedient to Jesus in the midst of our relationship, let us be quick to confess and repent of our sin and struggle. Let us be quick to forgive as Christ has first forgiven us for all our wrongdoings, the past, present and future through his life, death and resurrection. And perhaps right now, here, I want to ask for your forgiveness. For those of you who seem to have been hurt by me, in one way or another, in our dealings, in our speaking with one another, or whatever. So I ask for your forgiveness. As Christ has forgiven us, we ought to forgive one another. So if you know that there is somebody that you need to forgive or you need to ask for forgiveness, please approach that person. I know it's very hard, but God will grant grace. And this is what our Lord wants us to do as the family of God, to support one another. May you be empowered to be the peacemaker. God has made you and may you experience the peace, the blessedness and the joy that comes with his call to be the child of God. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Father, we want to thank you for your message of peace. We want to thank you that you have seek for us. You seek to forgive us. You seek us that we may know you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him, we may be sons of God. And we want to pray and ask that, Lord, you will empower us. Help us to fulfill the purpose you have given us to be sons and daughters of God on this earth. To be peacemaker wherever that you have put us in. To be the light of Christ in every corner that we are in the workplace, at home, in the church, or anywhere else, that we can truly be called the sons of God. We thank you, Father, this morning for your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. We thank God for Pastor James <coughs> sharing with us God's word. Let us uh, rise to the response songs. Empower me. No one knows uh, us better than our Lord. Empower me. Nobody knows how we got better than you. Nobody sees all. Strong in my 
Read the Apostle Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He was suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. This moment, I would like to invite Marcus Chan to come forward. He will share with us country of Laos. All right, and limits to freedom of speech or religion. And in terms of movement, there's also restrictions. And it remains one of the poorest countries in the world. And many of the people live uh, on the, off the land, all right, farming and such, right? And uh, hand-to-mouth existence. Um, next slide. The local religion is predominantly uh, polytheism mixed with Theravada Buddhism, which is actually the, the most uh, common form of Buddhism practice in this region, like Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, even Sri Lanka. This, this is probably one of the oldest form of Buddhism. Okay, and Christians only make up approximately 1%, 1.5% uh, uh, of the whole, whole population. 
Now the vision, next slide, uh, of the deanery of Laos uh, is that uh, the, 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 there's a vision that it will be a healthy Lao church growing spiritually and numerically despite hardship whose membership extends to all ethnic language and social groups within the nation. The aim all right, is to serve all people in Laos as we display the love of Jesus Christ in word and deed by working with our ministry partners throughout the country. Now here, the next table shows you the, the, the sort of uh, involvement uh, of the Anglican Church. It might be a bit too small for us to see. Uh, it started in 1961, uh, where under the supervision of the Diocese of Singapore and Malaya, all right, uh, the Church of the Holy Spirit, let's call it CHS in short, uh, was planted in Ventiam, all right, the, the capital of Laos. And um, there are adult and children members from many countries attending each week uh, in CHS. Um, focusing on in 1992, all right, uh, some of these uh, activities are held now, um, and, and even right now, the Anglican Relief and Development Agency right, started an English language center in Ventiam. Okay, uh, it's predominantly a uh, educational service provider. Okay, and they they do skills development and also uh, reach out to the street children. Right, uh, it's called the Hope Center, and they also provide leadership training course. Okay, so this is the Anglican Relief and Development Agency called ARDA. A R D A. Uh, um, about twelve years ago, um, uh, under the support of our uh, Sister Parish, uh, St. John and St. Margaret, all right, um, Agro AC, right, is uh, established uh, in uh, St. Tong district, and it's an organic farm. So this is another way of reaching out to the people of Laos. Uh, let's focus on Akda's work now. Next slide. Um, the fo focus is on capacity building of the locals to increase their employability, and at the same time mentor them in different areas. So this is ADA's mission. Right? We seek to mobilize resources to provide high quality, affordable training for the Lao people to further their individual and national development. So the language centers continue, continue to be the focal point of the work in different parts of Laos. Uh, and this work includes leadership training, uh, reaching out to the street children and vocational training and discipleship. So what can we do here uh, in Holy Trinity Church uh, located in Singapore? Okay, and there are three prayer pointers that, uh, that all of us will uh, I'll lead all of us to pray together. The first is to pray for the language centers in different parts of Laos. Okay, uh, that includes the recruitment of long-term and committed staff, and for students to be reached through these language centers. Uh, second is to pray for Lao seekers to overcome pressures to practice their current local religion and to place their faith in our one true God. And the third prayer point for today is to pray for believers to proclaim the gospel to their neighbors despite ongoing limitations and restrictions. Okay, can we have the last slide? So these are the three prayer pointers and right now wherever we are seated, uh, it can be by yourself or with a partner or two beside you, shall we pray together All right, uh, for the next uh, three minutes or so? All right before I close all of us. Let's pray.
Lord, you hear our prayers for Laos, the country that you love, the people whom you love. I pray, Lord, that you help the various language centers in different parts of Laos to be able to continue their recruitment uh, of committed staff who can stay for the long term and that they will be able to reach out to the students through this language center. We continue to pray for seekers in the country to overcome the pressure of their existing traditional religions uh, and help them to be able to place their faith in you, Lord, the one true God. And we pray for believers in Laos, our fellow brothers and sisters who are working hard, uh, whether they are from the Anglican diocese uh, or the local believers. We pray that you grant them the courage to proclaim the gospel uh, to their fellow neighbors, uh, despite all the challenges that they face daily. Lord, we know you love Laos and we want to commit Laos totally into your hands. You know and uh, you will continue to, we know that you can continue to bless the world uh, and that your presence uh, will be proclaimed and grow daily uh, in Laos. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us take this moment to whether sit or kneel to read the second Sunday before Lent together. Second Sunday before Lent. Let us read together. Almighty God and everlasting God, whose Son Jesus Christ healed the sick and restored them to wholeness of life, look with compassion on the anguish of the world and by your healing power make whole both men and nations through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Take this moment to for the intercession time. Dear Father Lord, Lord, right now we want to commit the world onto your hand. Father Lord, we pray for the escalations of the military tension between Russia and NATO over Ukraine and the threat of a full-scale civil war by the Ukrainian separatists. Father Lord, we also want to pray for a spiritual awakening from you to come upon the nations. We want to pray especially for those who are entrusted to rule, to engage and relate with other nations in peace and righteousness. Lord, may you rise up righteous people to influence their government, to walk in the ways of justice and of peace. May they provide true leaderships according to your standards to serve the greater good of a world facing many crises. Father Lord, we want to pray for our homeland Singapore. According to the health authorities, our nation can look forward to the easings of COVID-19 rest restrictions one, the Omicron wave has peaked and subsided. Currently, children aged 5 to 11 have statistically been the highest infection rate, followed by those aged 12 to 19. Lord, we want to pray for your guidance over the authorities in their plans and the decisions to cope with the potentially higher demand for the medical facilities and also for the children. Father Lord, we want to pray for greater trust among all the concerned to keep one another safe while we ride through this wave together. Lord, we also want to pray for the Diocese of West Malaysia. We thank you for your substance, your grace, your mercy upon the churches in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic. We are thankful that many have resumed church life through physical on-site services, Bible studies, prayer meetings, self-meetings and also via online platforms. Lord, we want to pray for your timely completion and certifications of the new building of the Diocesan Centre Headquarters. We want to pray for the smooth transitions of moving from the present location to the new building. We also pray for the Seminary Theological, Theology Malaysia, the St. Paul Theological College, and other theological schools and colleges for the trainings of leaders and church workers. We pray that more people will come forward to equip themselves for effective ministry and also to serve on the mission fields in accordance to your will and your leading. 
Lord, we pray for more churches will take up the challenge to help the communities in their respective zones of influence in West Malaysia. We want to pray especially for the work among the Orang Asli and the migrant in Malaysia. May they come to encounter your love through the good work done. And also may they come to the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, as the period of Lent, 2nd March to 14 April, is around the corner, we want to commit our church, Holy Trinity Church, onto your hand. Father Lord, we pray that may we be more committed, that we, can, we are able to devote more time for deeper personal reflections regarding our relationship with you and with others. We want to pray that may we have a humble and contrite heart and to grow in ob obedience to your word and your commands. We pray that we will ever be ready to give ourselves up as we remember Christ who gave your very own life in exchange for our salvation. We also want to pray that may we have a spirit of voluntarism and also give of ourselves in service of you and of others so that you will be honoured and glorified through our word and actions daily. Father Lord, let us commit and spend a moment of quietness and commit those names whom we know who are suffering in body, in mind or in spirit in prayer. Lord, these people whose names we mentioned, we want to commit them to you. You know their sufferings and their needs. May you grant comfort and healing to them. Give them courage and hope in their struggles and bring them the joy of a salvation. All this we pray in an, and ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning once again to one and all. As is our custom, we have now come to the time where we share the peace. I can invite all of you to stand and we say uh, these words. We are the body of Christ in the one spirit. We were all baptized in the one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share the peace of Christ with one another. Please be seated. Yes. Just want to draw your kind attention to a number of announcements. But before that, can I also uh, especially acknowledge those uh, who are here uh, for the first time, you're worshipping with us. Is there anyone who's here for the first time today? Just raise your hand so we can acknowledge you accordingly. Is there anyone? All of you have been here before? Nonetheless, a very warm welcome to all of you. And it's a joy uh, always to be in the, the house of the Lord to, to praise and worship Him together. May I also now uh, uh, go to the announcements. Baptism classes will begin on the 20th of March. Uh, this will be held on a Sunday at 1.30 p.m. So for those of you who are seeking baptism uh, to be baptized, uh, or those of you who have children who are uh, going to be baptized, please could you kindly uh, register with the church office uh, as soon as possible. So the baptism is scheduled to be on the 17th of April. Yeah. Next slide. Here is an opportunity for you to be a peacemaker in the community. So, gospel in action. And as children of God, sons of God, daughters of God, here is uh, what uh, Peko is uh, giving you as an opportunity to be a befriender, and uh, also to be a, a, well, a buddy and so on. And there are more details in the bulletin that is uh, out in your broadcast. And uh, there is a training uh, that will be provided through Zoom on the 23rd and the 26th of February, Wednesday and a Saturday. And for those of you who are interested and, and uh, uh, to know more and want to uh, sign up, 
Uh, please do not hesitate to contact our brother Richard Chua. Is Richard here this morning? Right. Okay, can you kindly stand, Richard, so everybody knows who you are? So before you leave today, he's right there at the corner. So don't run past him, shake his hand or, or bump his, uh, your fist and say, I, I, I'm in or I want to sign up. <laughs> okay, so he's the man. Richard, wave your hand one more time in case they haven't seen you. Okay, you can't miss that. So sign up and be a peacemaker in the community. Next. Here's another opportunity to be a peacemaker <laughs> through the Chinese Alpha course. So those of you who are friends or relatives uh, who are Chinese speaking or Mandarin speaking, this would be a wonderful opportunity for you uh, to introduce Christ uh, uh, to them or help introduce Christ to them. So please kindly note the details. And for those of you who want to uh, sign up or want to know more, please contact Pastor Chai Yi at the uh, office uh, to register. Uh, one more thing which is not in the announcements is regarding the AGM, which is scheduled to happen in April. Uh, the electoral roll is already out. Uh, I believe it's somewhere downstairs. So please kindly check uh, your, whether your names are on the electoral roll and if there's anything that's irregular or, or that, oh, how is it that my name is missing? Uh, don't be alarmed. Just kindly alert the, the church office and we will do uh, the necessary accordingly. Okay? Uh, the tithes and offerings, the details are there. You can uh, use the UN uh, uh, through PayNow and so on, the bank account details. Now, at the end of the service, for those of you who like prayer, please do not hesitate to come to the front. We'll be more than happy to pray with you and uh, to, to minister uh, to you also. Can we now stand for the benediction? Receive the Lord's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. We go in the name of Christ. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week ahead. God is good all the time. He put us all.